everybody. Welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. Episode 17, we've got a big one. I'll tell you what, we got Wayne Hogan from the Florida Rising Stars program. Great interview with him. Had a great fundraiser. I had the privilege to attend last Thursday night at Spurrier's Grill and Visor Sports Bar up in Gainesville. Coach Spurrier was there. Uh, Shane Matthews was there. Travis McGriff, Chris Doring had an outstanding night. Mick Hubert, the voice of the Gators, hanging out. And Wayne Hogan, the former athletic director at Flor- or assistant athletic director and sports information director at Florida State, was an incredible host. And I tell you what, guys, we had a good time. We got Coach Walter Banks from Lake Mineola High School joining us tonight after that outstanding run that Lake Mineola had last season. But first and foremost, happy Father's Day to not only the fathers out there, but the coaches who are father figures for uh, for us. I'm Dan LaForest, Bill Daniel, Coach Kyle Hayes. Coach Daniel, welcome back. Hey, it's been fun. I'm telling you what, and this episode's going to be exciting. They seem to get better and better each and every week, don't they? I, I, I love it. I, I love what we're doing. Everybody seems to be loving. In fact, I'll tell you what's really cool. I had the opportunity to go on Larry Bluestein's radio show on Monday night, and we talked about Varsity Sports Network for about 15 minutes. So I'm hoping some of those guys down in South Florida are tuning in tonight. Coach Hayes, welcome back. How was your week? Man, it was pretty good, man. Busy as always, but fun to be back with you guys, man. Another one, 17. We're on number 17 now, and uh, time flies, believe it or not, man. But I'm glad to be back. Happy Father's Day to everyone out there. Happy Father's Day to all the coaches. You guys see I got some of my kids up here, plus I got a few more over here in some boxes I haven't had a chance to put up yet. But, uh, you know, it's, it's great, man, for fathers out there. It's great for coaches who are father figures as well. And uh, glad to be back and super excited about this episode. Well, I tell you what, we're going to have more right after our commercial break. You're watching the Florida Gridiron Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. The Florida Gridiron Report is brought to you by Security Financial Management, Gators Dockside Grill, The A-Team with Charles Ruttenberg Realty, and Sports Thread. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? In case he got a hole in one. <laughs> well, that's what I call a rib tickler. And here's something else you'll get a kick out of. Come into Gators Dockside during Rib Fest and enjoy delicious fall off the bone ribs, char grilled to order, and one of five amazing flavors. For wings, seafood, sports, and ribs, you know where to go. It's Rib Fest at Gators Dockside. Meet me at the dock. is Sports Thread, and this is the new free Sports Thread app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout. And get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Statewide coverage from the Panhandle to Central Florida to Broward and Miami Dade, down to the Keys. All 22 sports from football, girls and boys basketball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, even swimming and track. Shows and live streaming broadcasts on various spectrums. Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, and On Demand. 24-7, seven days a week. Only on DSN. 
Welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. Now joining us, Wayne Hogan with the Florida Rising Stars Project. Wayne, welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report. Love it. I love being back. I, I feel I tell like you, I'm part of the family. You are. You are definitely one of the members of our family. And, you know, we had the privilege of bringing you on. God, it, it, it's probably 15 weeks ago. You were one of the first guests that we had on FGR. And, and we were promoting, we were informing people about the Florida, uh, the Florida Rising Stars pro Project and, and, and what it actually is, which we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. But I thought it would be great because a lot of people know who Wayne Hogan is from the 90s, and a lot of the young kids don't know the history uh, of really how you've gotten to where you are. So I, I think we want to talk about that a little bit. So, you know, you were a student at Florida State, and you actually continued in, and had the ability to be the, the, the sports information director during one of the for Florida State University working with Bobby Bowden one of the hottest coaches in college football history during a time when Florida State football was at its peak tell us about that experience and some of your greatest memories being being in Tallahassee well I was very fortunate I I grew up in Tallahassee so I was you know always since I was six years old I was a Seminole fan, you know, I went to every game. My dad took me, I'd sit in the end zone back in the days when, you know, when Bobby Bowden was an assistant coach there and, he, and it really dates me. That goes back to the early sixties. Um, you know, I was six, seven years old uh, and, and my dad would drag me to the football games. And back then it wasn't nearly the spectacle that it is today. A, an interesting side note, when I was in first and second grade in Tallahassee, Florida, uh, my neighbor, my, my neighbor, Ketty cornered right behind me was Bobby Bowden and his family. Wow. Uh, they lived in my neighborhood and, and Bobby was, Bobby wasn't Bobby Bowden then. Bobby Bowden was a, a lowly assistant coach. He coached with uh, Bill Peterson, who was a longtime head coach at Florida State back in the 60s. And Bobby was the wide receivers coach. Um, and, and they just happened to live, he and his family lived right in my neighborhood. And so uh, at age six, seven, and eight, first grade, second grade, third grade, the Bowden family and the Hogan family were closest of friends. And, and Terry Bowden uh, is my age. We were both the same age. Um, and so we went, we were in the same class together, same first grade class, second grade class, and we palled around together in the neighborhood. Meanwhile, Tommy Bowden, who also went on to some coaching fame, uh, we, he was the older brother and he was the one that gave, you know, slapped us around and told us, you know, to get out of his world and all that. And he was the, he was the antagonist. He was the chief antagonist, but, but that was, uh, it, it's really interesting. And I, I felt the need to tell you that quick story about, you know, really going back to when I was a little tyke uh, and first was introduced to the Bowden family. I used to, you know, go over and we'd have parties, you know, little spend the night parties and stuff like that at Bobby's house. And it was great. So um, it, it's interesting that years later, uh, you know, I'm, I stay around, Bobby leaves, moves up, packs the family up, leaves the neighborhood and goes to West Virginia. He becomes uh, an assistant coach at West Virginia and then ultimately got the head coaching job at West Virginia. But I was saddened only because I lost my buddy, Terry Bowden, who, who, who was my best neighborhood pal, uh, left and went away. And so many years later, we circle back and I'm in school at Florida State in the 70s. And, uh, and lo and behold, it was 1976. I'm working as a student assistant in the SID office working for the sports information director, just kind of learning the game, learning the tricks of the trade, um, learning the industry. I'm having the time of my life. I'm a, high, I'm a college kid and I got a little part-time gig and I'm working in the athletic department and lo and behold, who gets hired as the head coach at Florida State? My old buddy from first grade, Bobby Bowden. And here comes Terry and Bobby and, and Tommy and all the Bowdens back to Tallahassee. 
so we had a, a bit of a, you know, a reunion then. And I just happened to be at that time working in the, uh, you know, as, an, as a student assistant SID. And, uh, and so Bobby comes in there and, and gets the thing rolling. This is the late 70s. Uh, and by uh, the early 80s, uh, he's gone to the Orange Bowl twice in a row. He's turned this program, this, this absolutely dismal program, into all of a sudden into a winner. People are all talking. And here's Wayne Hogan, who finishes his degree at FSU, goes off. I leave for two years. I go off to do minor league baseball play by play. That's a whole nother story. But it, two years after I leave, I come back because I'm hired as the, at age 25 years old, I was hired as the sports information director of Florida State. This was 1982. And so by that time, Coach Bowden had things a bit on a roll. I come back in and of course, as the SID, not, you're responsible for all the sports but uh, keeping up with the football program was really my, my primary role um, and, and certainly spending every day with Bobby Bowden. Um, he, he had so much media attention, Dan, that, that he, uh, he required, a, you know, kind of a 24-7 PR guy, you know, somebody to help get him to his appointments and make sure he was in, on time for his interviews and his press conferences and and tr trying to be a liaison between the press and Coach Bowden. And so for, for, for the next 13 years, from 1982 to 1995, that's what I did. He, Coach Bowden and I worked together every day, literally almost every day for 13 years. And uh, the greatest time of my life, it was just, it was magical back in those days. You know, it, it, it's funny, you mentioned growing up in Tallahassee. Um, you know, there's not many of us true Florida boys around anymore, you know, where, where you're born and raised here in Florida. What high school did you go to? Godby. I was one of the first classes at Godby High School in Tallahassee. And, the, you know, it was kind of tough because uh, Leon was always the, uh, the premier high school in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of my friends went to Leon and uh, Godby was a brand new school then. And in fact, uh, I was in the very first ninth grade um, high school class. Prior to that, it, it, it was junior high. You would go to junior high, seven, eight, nine, and high school was 10th, 11th, and 12th. And when I got in, when I went from the eighth grade to the ninth grade, instead of being the big man on campus in my junior high, I got, it was the first class of ninth graders that got sent to high school. So, uh, so I show up at Godby High School. And, and the thing that was great about it was it was a brand new school. So everything was new. The classrooms were new. The equipment was new. Everything you did um, was, was first class. You know, it was really great being in a new school. But it had no reputation. And, uh, of course, uh, everybody at Leon kind of looked down on the Godby kids and and all that. So that's, uh, that, that's where I, I went to high school. I was a baseball player there, played on the baseball team and the golf team. And uh, I'm not sure which I was worse at. <laughs> One or the, other. the Florida Gridiron Report is brought to you by Security Financial Management, Gators Dockside Grill, The A-Team with Charles Ruttenberg Realty, and Sports Thread. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? In case he got a hole in one. <laughs> well, that's what I call a rib tickler. And here's something else you'll get a kick out of. Come into Gators Dockside during Rib Fest and enjoy delicious fall off the bone ribs, char grilled to order, and one of five amazing flavors. For wings, seafood, sports, and ribs, you know where to go. It's Rib Fest at Gators Dockside. Meet me at the dock. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Angel Carlson and I'm with the A-Team of Charles Ruttenberg Realty. We're located in delightful downtown DeLand and we service all of Central Florida. Our team is here to serve you for all of your real estate needs, whether you're buying, selling, or looking to invest. There is no time like the present to sell your existing home and buy your new one with the A-Team. Call me, Angel Carlson, so the A-Team can deliver your dream today. This is Sports Thread, and this is the new free Sports Thread app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout and get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Statewide coverage from the Panhandle to Central Florida to Broward and Miami-Dade down to the Keys. All 22 sports from football, girls and boys basketball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, even swimming and track. Shows and live streaming broadcasts on various spectrums. Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, and On Demand. 24-7, seven days a week, only on BSN. Well, well, it's funny because, you know, you've been so heavily active in the game of football. Um, obviously, your time, not only at Florida State, but also University of My uh, Montana, and then you were also the associate athletic director, if I remember correctly, from Georgia Tech. Right, correct. And um, so, you know, being involved around the game of football has been a big part of your life. And then, you know, most recently, um, part of the Florida Sports Hall of Fame. So what brought you to the Florida, um, the, uh, the Florida Rising Stars Project? Well, you know, Dan, life is, uh, life is funny, and especially in the world of sports, there's nothing uh, sure anymore. There had, never has been. Uh, there's no guarantees. Um, you're always at the mercy of, you know, the, the tide of, 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 you know, the fortunes of your teams. Um, in my case, I generally worked for an athletic director as my superior, as my boss, you know, and if that guy left, then whoever the new guy that came in was many times he would want to bring his own, his own team in. So, so you were susceptible to some moving around and, and I, I, I should tell you that that's kind of what happened to me. I thought I was going to be at FSU the rest of my life. I really did. I was so entrenched in Tallahassee and the FSU football and well, the FSU sports program in general, Mm -hmm. that I thought that was going to be my life. I thought I'd be there for 50 years and retire. Um, but in, in 1995, we had a, we had a change in athletic directors. And uh, I, I was served for a year as the interim AD at FSU. I was asked by the president to step in and serve as an interim. Well, I thought I did a pretty good job, and so did the president. And uh, I attempted when they went through the national search for the AD, I, I did my very best to try to get myself in position to be named the athletic director permanently. And uh, it was a dog fight. You know, it, I was among the final three and then eventually among the final two candidates for the job in 1995. And if that decision gone differently, I hope I would have been there, you know, to this day, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I would have loved it that much. But I did not get the job. Uh, Dave Hart was hired as the athletic director. Um, and my first meeting with Dave Hart, this is where I got a real sense of uh, the life of, of, of sports, uh, uh, you know, workers is, is that I was called into Dave Hart's office and I thought this was going to be a great meeting. Hey, you know, you're, you and I are going to be great teammates and great friends and this and that. And I walk the very first day he was on the job. I go into his office and he said, you've done a great job here. I know you've been here a long time, but you know what? You're not in my plans. I'm going to, I'm going to go get my own, my own team, my own group. And so, uh, sorry, sorry, it's not going to work out. 
And I walked out of his office and I said, my God, how did that happen to me? How did this just happen? And, and everything was, was going so good. <laughs> you know, that was, that was a very rude awakening. Um, well, I tell you, you know, you've landed on your feet. The Florida, uh, the Florida Rising Stars Project is, 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 you know, first of all, we're honored at Varsity Sports Network to partner up with you guys. Um, there's so much that this gives to young people beyond playing sports. For those who don't know about the Florida Rising Stars Project, give us an outline of exactly what that mission statement is. Well, it, and, it, and it ties right into what we've been talking about so far. It, I mean, I know a lot of people probably think this has gone off in a different direction. It really hasn't, because the Florida Rising Stars experience is all about somebody like a Wayne Hogan that's a young kid in high school that loves sports, that knows he's not going to be an NFL player or, or a Major League Baseball player and has an opportunity to gain a career in sports. That is the key to Florida Rising Stars. We are going to hold a series of sports camps. And I know people say, oh, there's a sports camp on every corner. There is. You can go to a sports camp any day of the week, any place in Florida, no question about it. But nobody, and I mean nobody that I'm aware of, is doing what we're doing. And that is, we're not only training these kids about things on the field, we're doing most of our training in the classroom. We're teaching these high school kids how to get a head start on careers in sports. Many of them don't even know all the opportunities there are out there. I didn't know, and most high school kids wouldn't know. So we're bringing these high school kids in, many from underserved uh, neighborhoods and, and, and uh, underprivileged kids that wouldn't have an opportunity to do this, but we're gonna bring them forward and we're gonna bring a series of very talented people in the industry to teach these kids how to get a head start. If you love sports and you wanna make a great life for yourself, you can make some money, you can have fun, you can work in the greatest industry in the world, and there's thousands of ways you can do it. We're going to teach you how to get your foot in the door and do that. I don't know anybody else who's teaching this, Dan. I don't. No, I, I think it's amazing. I mean, really, if you think about it, Wayne, it is you take a look at your career and, and what I've tried to do over my lifetime is channel my passion. And if we can find those kids that have a true passion for being involved with sports, they don't necessarily have to put on a helmet or tie up their shoelaces. You know, there are opportunities to be around sports. You know, one of the biggest crises that we have right now are referees. You know, there's a, there's a huge shortage. It has been very public. And that's a, that's a whole avenue on itself, not to meet, you know, the sports marketing, um, the, the training these are just yeah. some of the things that Florida Rising Stars is offering to young people to give them a taste of what they could possibly pursue. We're teaching all those disciplines you just mentioned. Sports officiating is a great one. Sports broadcasting. You know, look at what we're doing right now. The podcast, the, 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 all the, the video work that people are doing. And, and these kids grow up watching ESPN and they're watching Sports Center and they're watching all these uh, celebrities on TV. Well, you know what? You guys at Varsity Sports Network are going to come in there. They're going to show these kids what it's like to be in front of the camera, what it's like to be behind the camera. My goodness, you know, you're going to bring a production truck so that these kids see what goes on behind the scenes when you're producing a telecast. Uh, what, a, what a golden opportunity for a young kid to learn all of these, these aspects of, uh, of the sports world. So, you mentioned sports officiating. I, I'm really excited about that. Our friend Adam Bates is going to head up that, that particular uh, curriculum. And, you know, to hear Adam Bates talk about the opportunities that kids have, not only to be a part of sports and to be on the field and to be close to the coaches and the athletes and be in the action, but guess what? You can make money doing this and you can make money right away. In high school, you can do it. In college, you can, kids, you know, we hear stories of kids virtually putting their way through college as a, as a sports official. Uh, so, so if you don't think that'll get these uh, young kids' attention when you, I'll tell you, one thing that gets everybody's attention is when you start talking about, you know, making a buck here and there. 
So, you know, this program is free to these kids. That's the beautiful thing of what you guys are doing is bringing this and it doesn't cost them anything, but it's not cheap to do this. So how are you guys funding this? And I know some of that has to do with fundraising. And we had one heck of event last Thursday night, teamed up with Coach Spurrier at his new restaurant, uh, Spurrier's uh, Gridiron Grill and the Visor Sports Bar right there in Gainesville, Florida. And we had a heck of a night, Wayne. That's the way we're doing it. We're going around and we're telling our story to corporate leaders in, in the cities where we will have these, these programs. And now we've expanded to five different areas of Florida. And we will go in a few weeks before, you know, at least a few weeks before our first camps take place. And we tell our story and we ask these people to help us fund these kids. We don't want a single kid to ever have to pay a dime to go through this one day uh, situation. And does it cost money? Yeah, it does cost money, but we have a lot of people out in the world that are very benevolent and they enjoy helping kids that deserve to be helped. And so we've got a number of people uh, stepping up to the plate to write checks to support us. We're a 501c3. We're a, we're a very, very high profile nonprofit uh, organization. And uh, people are enjoying hearing about what we're doing. We're getting great responses everywhere we go. Gainesville, off the charts, it just off the charts. I mean, we had some very, very important uh, community leaders in that room. I was they impressed. Got it. You know, they got it. They understand what we're doing. And I uh, can't tell you how many people came up and either wrote a check on the spot or said, you know, I'm going to commit to help you guys. And so we're in the process right now of circling back with all of them. And, uh, you know, I think we'll have these Gainesville camps covered in terms of expenses and we'll have all these kids paid for and they'll, they'll have a great, great experience. Well, let's talk a little about that, that experience. I mean, Coach Spurrier was gracious, but we also had some other Florida Gator, former Florida Gator greats that were there. Um, making themselves available. Shane Matthews uh, was was very gracious. Travis McGriff, his father, Lee McGriff. And then you had Chris Doring was was there with us as well. Not to mention, and, and I was excited about this one, the voice of the Gators, Mick Hubert. Having that conversation with these gentlemen was exciting, not only for myself, but everybody that was there. Right. It was. It, we, you know, and, and, and that's what we've been very fortunate, Dan, because uh, we've gotten a lot of celebrities, I would call celebrity uh, athletes, and, and former athletes and, and current athletes that have endorsed us. Uh, they've reviewed what we're doing. They know the people that are involved in what we're doing, and they've given us their full endorsement. Guys like Spurrier and Bowden and, and Mark Ritt and Vince Dooley. And how about Wade Boggs, Hall of Famer? How about Johnny Damon? You know, let's go through the list. Benny Blades from down in South Florida. These these folks have all lent us their name. I like to say name, image, and likeness. That's the big mm -hmm. byword now in college athletics. And that's what they've given to us. They say to us, we believe in what you're doing. Use my name, use my image, use my likeness to help you sell this program to, to, the, to the general public. So Wayne, you've got a couple camps coming up here here in July. Why don't you talk a little bit about that and give those dates and locations? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna our very first camp is on July the tenth. It's in Gainesville, uh, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to get in there and uh, and, and meet meet all those folks the other night. Um, by the way, we have a we have a gentleman named Wayne uh, um, Wayne Fields, who's a former Gator. Uh, who has been very influential in helping us in Gainesville. He's tied to, uh, together a lot of logistics for us. He has gotten into the neighborhoods and schools and boys and girls clubs and, and all of those uh, places in Gainesville where we're going to get our attendees. But this camp is on uh, July the 10th. Um, it's a one-day camp. These are all on Saturdays. This is going to be on Saturday, July the 10th. And uh, it starts about uh, nine o'clock in the morning. Our registration begins at eight. Mm -hmm. uh, the camp gets underway for real at nine. And we'll have the kids there until about 3.30 in the afternoon. And they'll have a full day. Believe me, they will have more fun than the law allows. Uh, it won't be boring. I, I know it sounds when we talk, start talking about classrooms and curriculum and all that. Um, it's not going to be that way. It's going to be interactive. 
It's going to be, uh, we're going we're to bring in some celebrities by Zoom. We're going to have some there. Uh, for example, Shane Matthews will be live at the camp. Uh, so so uh, this is a full day and it's very, it's going to be very exciting from kids from middle school age through high school. Uh, the middle schoolers will spend their day on the field because the curriculum for the, the careers is not quite yet in their, in their field of vision. Mm. But the high school kids are the ones that we're excited about getting in the in this career path. So, uh, you, to, you, uh, folks that want to be involved with the camp, there's a registration online on our uh, at our uh, um, website. It's for it's in, it's an easy one, by the way. FloridaRisingStars.com, the name of our organization. Florida, spell it out. FloridaRisingStars.com. You click in. As soon as you get in there, you'll see where you can register for our camps. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to people jumping on that and being a part of that. Well, Wayne Hogan, we appreciate you taking the time to tell the story and, and to share a little bit about you. I mean, this is, this is what we like to do on Florida Grown Report is get in and really let people tell their stories that other people really uh, would not hear. But um, we look forward to working with you and we look forward to having you back very soon. So anytime, we're going to take man, a break. You know, I'm sorry. Anytime. I, I enjoy being with you. We're going to take a break. You're watching the Florida Grid Run Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. This is Sports Thread. And this is the new free Sports Threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout. And get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. Dan LaForest, Coach Bill Daniel, Coach Kyle Hayes, and joining us for the first time, the head coach for Lake Mineola, Coach Walter Banks. Coach, welcome to the Florida Grunner Report. Thank you, guys, and thank you guys for having, having us. Uh, we're excited to have you. I mean, listen, Lake Mineola, what a story last year. 11-2, um, and two, go deep into the playoffs, get to that championship game, but what a ride. I mean, some of your games were just absolutely exciting. Some of the guys that we got to watch – outstanding but before we get into that let's talk about your playing days let's talk about how you got to where you are today and the influences that you've had yeah suppose I got what how I got to where I am today is from you know other coaches actually you know you know trying to do the things that the coaches in Florida or Florida is doing trying to you know, help help kids going that are going through tough time because I'd be the first one to tell people I was an at-risk kid growing up you know, I'm from uh, Montgomery, Alabama. And, you know, and when you think about it, you know, you need that type of guidance. You know, you had it from your parents, but it's a difference, different when it comes from a coach. Because sometimes in high school, you spend most of your time with your, you know, with your coach or at school than you are than you're at home. So, you know, you know, I made some bad decisions early on, like, you know, just being immature, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, had, you know, coaches that, you know, cared about me and loved me and, and stuff like that and helped me get through those rough times in my life. And now I'm just trying to return the favor with these kids. Coach Daniel. Oh, Chuck, you said Montgomery, Alabama, correct? Uh, yes, sir. 
How would you describe Montgomery, Alabama football with one of the counties here in the state of Florida? Is it close? Is it similar to Lake County where you're at now? It's, it's not similar to Lake County. And, it's, and to me, I don't think it's, it's similar to any county in Florida. I'm getting my soapbox here in a minute. But one thing I can say about Alabama, they put a lot of resources in, in our high school, in our high school athletics. You know, now when it comes to talent wise, the talent is a lot stronger throughout the state of Florida. But when it comes to the resources, you know, and, you know, people putting their money into the high school program, I got to give an edge to Alabama. And that's something I wish. And I try to, you know, fight for more funding, more resources, especially in Lake County and Central Florida and Central Florida and the state of Florida, because we have superb athletes. And sometimes we leave those athletes, you know, left out in the cold because we don't have the resources from the coaches, from the money to the weight room to help, you know, you know, uh, produce a better athlete, which we already have a base of good athletes already. So the term booster club has two totally different meanings, depending on which state you're in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot. A lot. <laughs> Coach Hayes, questions for our head coach this week. Yeah, it's a difference between a booster club and a booster organization. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, exactly. There you I'm go. Glad to get together. But, uh, you know, I, I know firsthand, Coach, but uh, glad to have you on here. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, you talked about being a coach, and I can see right now you're in your office right now. It's summertime. As coaches, we know we're always there. Um Which coach and which coach had the most influence on you and what did that coach has he ever said anything that just stuck with you to this day? Hey, oh, the coach I have most uh fluence. I'm actually, you know, actually one of my college coaches that is a uh actually he's the head coach of Eastern Kentucky now, Walter Wells. And pretty much he just told me something that stuck with me the whole time. You don't get what you want, you get what you deserve. And, and I think I was going through life, and some kids go through life just expecting things you know and life is going to give you what you put into it it's going to give you what you deserve if you're not putting in a lot of time in the classroom and on that field trust me life is going to give you just that bare minimal but if you're doing a classroom and going extra on the field uh, or in the classroom learning football you know uh, life is going to give you the high accolades of you know of football and what you deserve because you put the you put the work into it you know i agree with you 100 you know, right yeah you know, that, that was, you know, I played for Don Riley up at East Tennessee state. And he used to say the definition of luck is when preparation meets opportunity, yes. you know, and, and unfortunately a lot of people don't understand how to be prepared for that opportunity. They don't know what the opportunity would even look like, but um, you guys, you guys were prepared for a lot of opportunity last season, 11 and two out, you know, Lake Mineola has never seen this type of strength. Uh, as a community, tell us about your community and tell us about that season last year and what it meant to everybody there in Lake Mineola. Uh, you know, in the 11, 11 and two season, you know, great season. I tell, you know, tell people, but what made us 11 and two was three, four years ago. All right. Buying into the process of what we're doing, you know, knowing that hard work, you're going to get what you deserve. And it's hard to take, you know, it's hard to change, you know, a, a cycle pretty much all right so it took me years so the kids can buy in to what hard work can do do to you what mentally mental, mental, being mentally tough being physically tough you know showing effort and teamwork and 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 unfortunately we get kids that you know be honest with you that come to us entitled and selfish so you know so they don't want to work hard they don't want to grind in in, in summer when it's 110 degrees out here in june you no know, heat index. So they had to learn to be mentally tough. And it took me a while to get them on that, on that program, a program in that process to, uh, you know, of doing that. So, so I always tell people, yes, 11 and two this year, but it started back in 2018, you know, those kids just being, being dedicated and whatever. And, and, and to be honest with you, when it comes to a community, like you said, the community haven't seen it, seen this before. And I think uh, someone told us, uh, told me it was like, 37, 39 years since, you know, a Lake County school made it to that deep into the playoff run, you know, so obviously a lot of people around this area didn't see that, didn't see that. So it made a buzz around the community that, to help us with that support and, you know, and help us, you know, trying to get that booster organization, not that booster club. <laughs> you, know? you know, Coach Daniel, it sounds like there's a trend here. Every head coach we talk to talks about that buy-in and it sounds like Coach Banks set that foundation here really early for well, he for put it on a key for me 
he put it on a tee for me just before we went on. I was kind of just looking at the last three, four, five years. They go five and five and 17 and 18 with two and four in the district both years. And things aren't appearing to go that well for him. So it, it's interesting that he mentioned that because to me, that tells me he had a young team. He had some talent, but they weren't totally bought in. They hadn't played in big games. They didn't know how, how to handle the experience. And yes, they went 11 and two last year, but what really began, I'd love to hear what happened in 2019. They go nine and four. They lose to an Oval Ocala Vanguard team during the season that has athletes all over the place. They're making their tour in seven on seven right here throughout central Florida, throughout Florida and winning seven on seven tournaments. They're that athletic, especially in the skilled positions. They go down and take on one of the toughest teams to play on their home turf, the Vero beach Indians and play them close. And then they ultimately lose in the playoffs to a Tampa Gaither team that was really strong, but Playing in some of those environments against those type of skilled athletes, a different district, they had faced Edgewater previously in their district, but to see and to start to travel and go to other places, it started to really, I think, set the stage for what happened in 2020. Coach, could you share us with a little bit about 2019 and how it got you to where you are today as a program? Incorrect, and you're exactly right, because a lot of people thought I was crazy by scheduling the Vanguards to the Vero Beach, but the only way my kids are going to see the top athletes in the state is to play these top uh, top athletes. And, and unfortunately, at that time, we was losing those games. But in, in I think what really got our kids, you know, mentally focused is the butt kicking we took from Tampa Gaither. They were willing to listen to you a lot more afterwards, weren't they? Uh, uh, yes. And I think that woke us up and woke our coaching staff up because we was we thought we was doing a decent job. But when, when once we faced them, they were just a better team mentally and physically, you know, than us. And from that time on, when I we walked off that field, we said never again, you know. And we don't we don't like to talk about other teams, you know, on our schedule because we try to just worry about Lake Mineola. But in the back of our minds, that 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 Tampa Gate the game was was there. And it was there until we played them in, I think it was the semifinals, the regional semifinals, the regional finals, and we ended up, beat, ended up beating them. But that was a, we prepared for that mentally for a whole year and physically for that Tampa Gator game. Sounds a lot like Sanford Seminole, who you played in week two really close. Your only two losses last year were two, to two state champions in Miami Central and Sanford Seminole. You're exactly right. And that's also, and I, and I use that as a motivational tool because we need to get where San Francisco, uh, you know, no is. Uh, no, we need to get where Miami Century is. So it's gave us something to to work towards, towards too, because we're not there yet. And once we get there, we got to, and like I tried to tell the kids, I said, this year, everybody recognize you. We go to 707, everybody recognizing the brand of Lake Mineola. So now you're getting everybody best effort. All right. It's not like we coming in the, the five and five Lake Mineola. We coming in at the 11 and two Lake Mineola. So even in 707 terms, like I said, you're getting everybody best effort. All right. And so that's something that, you know, you know, you know, I, you know, I want, and I you know I want that challenge or whatever. And we put those challenges on our kids because it's going to be every one player. more question guys for coach. I know Kyle's going to lead in probably with something similar. <laughs> coach Hayes has been to state championships down in South Florida. I've coached in two, four regional or four semifinal games. Do you feel that now that you've played in meaningful games, probably the biggest game in school history was that triple overtime thriller last year against St. Augustine that they'll talk about for years in Lake County. That was a heart attack game, by the way. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you you feel now that the kids understand the expectations 2021 it's easier to coach because the kids will police themselves better because they know what it takes to try to get back to there i think it's actually it's harder to coach because I, I believe in a lot of mental kids with kids would get complacent and they would get like you know i'm okay i don't need to work hard you know and stuff like that so it's kind of i stepped it up a little so they won't get complacent because they, we're, when the bottom line, we're still messing with 15, 16 year old kids, you know, and to be honest with you, you know, football is not the, you know, the first thing in their life, you know, right now it's video games and girls, you know, and stuff like that. So I have to keep them focused and keep stepping up, uh, stepping up every day to keep them, 
you know, mentally tough and keep them on a, a good playing field. Awesome. Coach, I'm going to go back just a little bit. Everybody's talking about that 17, 18, but I'm going to take you back to 2015 when you got the job at Lake Mineola. It was you and I, I got a bone to pick with you, coach. You beat me out for that job. I don't know if you know that or not. Uh -oh, but I didn't know that. <laughs> no, nah, that's fine. But I, I applied for that job the same time I was looking to move up here to Central Florida and ended up at Olympia. And I have to say this, if I'm going to lose, I wouldn't lose to a better guy than you, man, because you've done an excellent job with that program. And I want to go back and ask you, um, we were kind of on the same track, taking a program that maybe wasn't so hot right then. What was your philosophy when you stepped on campus and that first meeting with those players in the, maybe in the auditorium on the locker room or in the field house, how did that, what was that first meeting like? And what is it that you wanted to convey to those players? Their first meeting was like to change the culture from A to Z, you know, and we started out time I got here, something, you know, you know, I got from a clinic, it's called a real man program. You know, I went to a Nike clinic, I saw it was out of Michigan, they did a real man program. So that's the first thing I bought. And it just taught the kid, taught the kids how to be a man. You know, even to the point of, you know, if you're getting up from a table, push a chair up on the table. So those little things got to go first before I got to be, uh, got, I got to handle those things first before I start trying to even win a game or win a playoff game or win a district championship or win a state championship. I have to do the little things right first. And that's what they wasn't doing. They had some talent, but it was just all over the place. So we started from the very basic, all right, or how you dress. We're going to dress alike. We're not, you're not going to have sag your pants in the hallways, hallways, in which I got a lot of pushback from, from the veteran players. But, you know, at the end of the day, the, the veteran players and their parents thank me for that. You know, we're not wearing not Nike slides to school. We're going to look professional. So I, I had to start that culture first. And it took some years to get it the way I need, I need to go. But now we're known as, you know, the most disciplined program in, in um you know, on, on school campus in which that's something they didn't have at the beginning is that decimal. They had the talent, the talent is here, but they just didn't have the decimal when it from A to Z to make it work. So that's that culture I just wanted to change. And it was hard, trust me. That, that, that's awesome. I know Mama Hawkeye, she was part of my interview process. Is she still there? Oh, uh, yes, sir. She is. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's awesome. So she is, she's, she was tough, man, but I loved her. I loved her, you know, her presence and she really cared for the, for the kids in the school and the school body, man. Like you said, you call her mama Hawk. You, you can't get any more motherly than that. Right. Uh, let me ask you my part two of this question is, so now that you implement the culture and all of these things, we, a lot of people really talk about assistant coaches. Was this your first job in Florida? No, no, actually, I, that's, this is my, I was used to be the head coach of South Lake High School uh, in Mount Verde Academy and started their football. So I was the OC and assistant head coach there. So this became my second head, head job in the state of Florida. I got you. So let me ask you about, now you're going into Lake Mineola, you're going into the school, the assistant coach process of hiring guys. I know you may have pr probably brought some guys in that you've known, but I know maybe you got some new guys on that staff. What was that process like in looking for coaches to uh, kind of follow your lead and, and fulfill your philosophy? Right. And you know, by coaching at Olympia, it is so hard to hire assistant coaches. You know, just how the state of Florida has their rules with their, 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 their teaching allotment, allotments and stuff like that. So you you might have one or two coaches on a, a staff that you trust. Everybody else be probably going to be lay coaches, <laughs> you know, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, coaching our community just to get everything going. And that's something I, I hope they change, you know, in the state of Florida. And that's one thing I was talking about earlier this segment is that we're not like the Alabamas in Georgia because we're, we're not putting enough resources in these assistant coaches, not just the head coach, the assistant coach, because you know as well as I know, I'm nothing without these assistant coaches because I can't, you know, right now I'm doing an interview and I got ninth grade workouts going on in there. They're not in there by themselves. They're in there with assistant coaches, which is not getting paid, you know, saying stuff like that in the summer. So it's, it, it is really hard to tell a, to, uh, you know, tell a coach, we've been to work, you know, you know, to 10, 11 o'clock at night and on weekends and whatever for nothing, you, you know? So that has been a, uh, and I talked to every coach in the state of Florida, that, that, that is the biggest problem we have is getting good assistant coaches that are dedicated and in, in, uh, dedicated into making the kids better and making the program better. You know, coach, so, you're, you're, so spot question, very hard. you're spot on. I mean, this is a challenge uh, for head coaches, assistant coaches, funding the programs, 
you know, it seems like every head coach I've talked to, they're having a hard time raising money just to recondition helmets. You know, the county's just, it's not in their budget to give extra money to not just football, but all athletics. And this is something I think has to be addressed at the legislature level, because listen, you know, the reason we're here, right? High school athletics is huge in the state of Florida, and we have to prioritize that. Right, right. You're, and you're exactly right. And I was telling Mama Hawk the other day, I said, something needs to change because we're not giving resources to these extracurricular, extracurricular activities, like, like the band, the drama club, the robotic club, sports, because that will actually save your kids off the streets. All right. There's a reason why the crime rate is so high, because we, you know, we... We barely give it, give them anything, no resources, whatever, and just let the kids off in the streets. And what and what kids going to do when they got nothing, you know, to go to? You know, when I was growing up, we had you know local boys clubs to go to and stuff like that. It's nothing like that here. All right, so the, so the schools become the safe the safe haven, and you have to start funding these these programs. So these kids won't be on the streets making bad decisions. That's just my opinion on it. You know, but. And it can't be all the responsibility of the head football coach. You're absolutely sure. right. Sure. Coach, we have a few more minutes. So let's get into 2021 here. Yes, let's talk about, you know, we, we've been talking to everybody's challenges as far as scheduling. And you've got a couple doozies on your schedule coming up at Daytona Beach Mainland and at Jones. So tell us about your schedule. And then let's finish out with you talking about some of the kids you're excited to see on the field this year. In, in our schedule, some, you know, my assistant coaches actually got, you know, you know, mad at me because we had to put a schedule like that together. But I had to tell them this. I said, I've been working 20 years to get the respect. When I call a team, oh, coach, you know, we can't play y'all, y'all too strong, whatever. I've been, I've been waiting 20 some years for that. All right, for that type of that type of respect. So we had to go out and get the mainlands and the Carroll Cities, the Flem the Fleming Islands and those teams like the uh that you know that to play. And I think it just it just shows that where our program is is going, that we are we're in the same conversation as those teams right now. So, you know, they they joke around the uh the field house saying we got an SEC West schedule, but hey, they gotta put eleven players on the uh, on, on the field. I you know. Like myself, I only carry 35 players. We'll play against some teams that uh, got 60 over there, but those 35 are going to be tough. You know, like I said, we only can put 11 on the dog on field at, at one time. You know, so I don't care how many years on the sideline, we still got to, you know, play 11 versus 11. Well, talk about some of those players you're getting ready to go to battle with. Right, like uh, our, our our defense is our strongest part. Our team, we're returning um, – I think nine out of 11 starters on defense. And, you know, our biggest one, our defensive tackle, um, uh, uh, Nick Campbell, we, he actually just committed to um, uh, North Carolina State. And our secondary is uh, very strong when it comes to uh, Ethan Cole, Ke uh, Keandre McGlure, linebacker, uh, Drake uh, Drake Hartwell, and, you know, and stuff like that. But those kids that have been in our program and those older kids have, they're carrying on the tradition of the, of the hard work and stuff like that. Well, I tell you what, we're about low on time here. Coach Walter Banks, thanks for joining the Florida Grid on Report. We're looking forward to seeing what you guys pull off this year. I, I know you guys have put in a lot of hard work, and, and that schedule is definitely something I know you're starting to circle some dates on. But uh, we'll be right back. You're watching the Florida Grid on Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. The Florida Grid on Report is brought to you by Security Financial Management, Gators Dockside Grill. The A Team with Charles Ruttenberg Realty and Sports Thread. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. One, 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 one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. Yeah, I was building on the lecture, versus coming daily under pressure. Working on applying the scheme, the true stock trademark is at the edge of your dreams. I'm talking one, 
One shot for the kill, the priest Ooh, free. Yes, sir. I'm turning dreams into reality. In the lab with the formula in chemistry. This is Sports Thread. And this is the new free Sports Threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout. And get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network. Dan LaForest, Coach Bill Daniel, Coach Kyle Hayes, Guys, we had a wonderful show. Wayne Hogan, outstanding guy. Florida Rising Stars Project is an amazing, amazing organization, giving these kids so much more than just sports training, giving them career opportunities. Coach Walter Banks from Lake Mineola, outstanding story. Looking forward to what they can do as an encore from that 2020 season, 11-2, and two, and what they're faced with their schedule this year. But guys, we're now joined by Balen Trujillo, the host of the Be True Sports Show right here on Varsity Sports Network on the VSN Orlando. Balen, you're relaunching your show next Monday. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. Like I said, we like you just mentioned, I've had the show for the last couple of months and then we took a little break there as we're working on big time projects. I'm really excited for this next one coming up on uh, VSN Network with uh, Julian Calvez. It's going to be a two-part documentary series on him. So I'm really excited about that. He's, you know, been a training of mine for the last seven years. We also did a show on him specifically um, around the Elite 11 time. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting back, uh, especially next Monday, relaunching uh, the show. Uh, but like I said, it's been a great partnership with VSN and now Sports Thread getting involved. And, you know, I'm really excited with the whole deal. And I'm just blessed to be having an opportunity to have a platform through my quarterback trainings to even have a show uh, specifically designed for that purpose. So I'm, I'm really excited. Coach Hayes, your final thoughts. Man, it was a great show. Like I said, man, everything was great. I really enjoy the fact that they give those young men in that program an opportunity to learn things outside of the game of football, right? From the back end side. And a lot of people don't understand how many people are involved in the game and that make a real impact on the game when it comes to that. And then second, with Coach Walter Banks and what he's done in that program is phenomenal uh, in such a short period of time, believe it or not. And uh, I, have to give, I have to give some credit to the administration for giving him the opportunity to be build that thing up the right way too. So sometimes they need their credit too from an administrative standpoint, seeing the vision, sticking with the vision, and now you got a great outcome being a, a state contender uh, in, in Lake Mineola. And to Balin, I'm excited about your show. I can't wait to check it out, man. I know you do a great job with those quarterbacks. You know, you put a lot of time and effort with those guys, man, and they come out to be uh, very good players, man. So big, my, big hat, my hat's off to you, man, for what you do. Coach Bill Daniel, take us out. Uh, when you talk about Wayne Hogan, you're there with Wayne Hogan and Steve Spurrier. You got Knowles and Gators together for the betterment of high school football players in this state, trying to create opportunities for kids. It doesn't get any better than that. And as Coach Hayes just said, what about Walter Banks? What he's done? A five and five and seventeen and eighteen, but he started out. He gave us a glimpse into how he's gotten there, and it started with being a real man first. It was off the field. And you could tell one of the proudest things that he shared with us is his program, the largest sports program on any high school campus is recognized for its discipline the most as they walk the halls. You got to be good in the classroom. You got to be good in the weight room before you can ever be good out on the field. And you see it all coming together. And he's now reached that point. He's told us it took him 20 years, but now it's anytime, any place, we'll meet you wherever you want to play us. And that has to be a great feeling heading into the 2021 season. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, that's all we've got. You're watching the Florida Gridiron Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. We'll see you next week. Yeah.